So in the last video, we looked at the crack to bang and my problem with it. Now, there's definitely some areas there that need addressing, um, especially down to my understanding the crack to bang and my explanation of it. But, I mean, potato, potato, as I said on Twitter, I mean, the, 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 the observation is exactly the same, no matter how I interpret the bullet dynamics. Um, so I do have an answer on that. And um, after meeting with a rather smart gentleman named Gideon that um, I've, I, I understand from a physics perspective, um, which has led me down, it's left, led me to a bit of a fork in the road because obviously that means now I understand that some of my measurements are off um, and obviously I own that and will, will correct it, but I suppose that is the nature of these sorts of projects is the information obviously you update and refine as you go so i will get back to that um now i understand that premise um the last video before that um we looked at how we could use this the difference in arrival on a pair of microphones to place the shooter or well, not the shooter should i say i could take it back because it's not really i'm not placing the shooter. i'm just saying the audio came from above you know, in that camera and um, from that camera's perspective. Now, there's obviously other multiple perspe perspectives to layer on top. So um, with that in mind, um, we are going to look today at pushing that a little bit further in the form of creating that measurement and placing it as a bearing um, on a map. Um, and then we should be at a point where the sound came from, at least the direction the sound came from. That's my microphone. Thank you. <laughs> Charlie Kirk brings a pretty good audience. That is the angle that we are looking at today. Um, and I've chosen this one because it's further out the field. Um, and obviously, it is pretty out the way of the low C center. Um, so. As you can see, there is definitely a time difference of arrival there. Um, so if I measure peak to peak, I mean, I suppose that's the peak there. What have we got there? Three, four samples, two, three, four samples. So the measurement is four samples, and again, it's at 44,100. Um, and that is what I've got it set up in the door. Double check, I suppose. Yeah, we're hitting about four samples there as well. As you can see, I've drawn the line from where the, the mic is uh, pointed at Carly Chirk's um, tent. So we can see on the right that we've actually got a 159.1 or 159, we'll just round it down. It's not going to, 0.1 is not going to change what's going to come out of this measurement. Using chat GPT, I've just gone and got some standard uh, phone spacing uh, for the mics because we, I don't actually know what this is recorded off. So I'm not going to go nuts here. Um, I'm just going to like explain quickly. Here's the formula for you, Thatcher, because I know you like to check the maths, uh, you legend. Um, and for everybody that's attempting it, I've put um, a little breakdown of what each the symbol means and all of that, of what you're, what you're measuring. Um, there's the different cards of what we're actually doing, and we're going to actually make band A and band B. Um, I don't know if I uh, said it, but uh, band A is going to be working off the smaller mic pairs, and the band B is going to work off the largest uh, mic pairs in comparison to standard phones that are popular, you know. Um, I create the card two here, which is for band one. <laughs> Um, is 3.1 centimeters to 3.5 centimeters, and we have the angles, um, and then we have band two, 3.6 centimeters to four centimeter mic difference, the spacing of the phone mics, yeah? Just a quick explanation. Um, the broad side is the microphones, so think of it like a pair of ears, essentially. 
So it's not the direction the sound came from, you know, it's just the, the microphone pair. Front bearing is the actual direction we care about and back bearing is the mirror image. It's relevant for the mirror image because the two mics obviously don't care which direction it came from, you know, forward or backwards. You know, it is. So that is why we provide a front and back bearing as if the protractor was 360 degrees. So 3.1 is 90, it saturates, so it's, that, it's not 3.1. 3.2 is 80.81, 3.5 is 64.49. So if we put them in, we'll have a cone of incidents we can then plot. Creating band A, um, we're just going to go for 3.1 and 3.5. Um, 3.1 is saturates, it literally comes direct on, so that's not happening here because we do have a lead on the left side. So we'll go from 3.2 to 3.5, which is 80.81, so just 80, .80 degrees, <laughs> and 64.49. So now we're on the drawing, all we need to do is really draw out the lines um, um, with the angles that we've already got calculated. So um, obviously I don't know which way the phone's facing exactly, so there's margin for error there. And you've also got a, a margin for you know a little bit of error on the actual uh, TDOA stuff as well. So we can sort of guesstimate using what we've got, but um, the wider angle points the wrong way. Um, essentially, um, we all know that, the, that there wasn't a shooter on that roof um, because we can see it in the recordings. Um, so it brings me to the next lot, which is the smaller microphone spacings. Um, and if we add in a margin for error, we can see pretty clearly which roof this is pointing to already. Um, again, lean it one way, lean it the other way. It's not going to point to the low C center. Um, and it's pointing pretty directly to this white roof here at the moment. So, so just to wrap this part up, there are a few variables that are worth being honest about as I kind of tried to touch upon while I was free rambling. Um, I don't know the exact orientation of the phone um, and the rotation of that phone. I don't have a definitive data on the microphone spacing or what was active. All of that introduces a small amount of possible drift in the angle we calculate. But the important thing is that none of those unknowns fundamentally change the outcome. But the important thing is that none of those unknowns fundamentally change the outcome. If the wrong mic pair are involved, the result wouldn't shift by a couple of degrees. It would throw the entire speculation out, um, which we saw with the green lines. The fact that uh, our results stay stable, even with those uncertainties, tells us that we're in the right ballpark. We could have, of course, fine-tuned this further, for example, by adjusting the phone's assumed rotation a few degrees or nudging the cone slightly. I could have doctored it. I could have done whatever, but I just shared what it came out as. And when we pair this information with the results from the microphone test, we, which showed the sound traveling downwards, we now have two independent measurements that line up, one indicating direction of travel and the other one indicating a likely point of origin. It's important to stress that this still isn't conclusive proof. To reach that standard, we need multiple layers of corroborating evidence, additional recordings, and ideally some controlled replication, um, which I am working on um, with a few other people. Um, this is simply a demonstration of how we plot the bearing and how we start to narrow down potential source. In future videos, we'll be building on this method, refining the measurements. Like I said at the beginning, I've got more to refine. Now I understand a bit more about crack and boom. Um, adding more, I'll be adding more data points and I'll be layering them up until the picture becomes clearer. But even at this stage, it's strong indication that the sound we measured likely originated from that rooftop. Hopefully that helps uh, a little bit. Uh, more and uh, I'll catch up with you guys again soon.